<laughs> no, and, and the uh, strength of tightening, I got to watch with the new one because you can really crunch things with it also. Uh oh, what am I doing? I want to start backwards on this one. I almost did it wrong. Um, so I was hoping to, to turn a piece where I could keep those in there. And uh, we'll see if I can. Normally, I'd say you don't want to go with bark, but this is thin bark and I'm pretty much going through it, I think. What does... Yeah, there you go. All I'm looking at is trying to balance it out a little bit. Do a little roughing with this one and then switch it. Reaching a little too far over the rest of it there. And that's where that bark's going to come back to get me now.
in a right spot. And take it down a little bit to see if I can't get rid of that rotten wood. It's right in there. Kind of a pitch pocket. I can feel it as I'm turning. It feels like a, it, it comes out in a chunk and then it's hard. Huh. Don't run into those too often. I think what I'm going to do a quick change here. Nope, I use 50 degree on almost everything. It's one of those things that um, I've just become accustomed to it. And uh, I have, you know, um, bottom feeders. I, I had one 45 and I changed it and it's that whole thing of, I'm just used to using a 50 and I, and I always go to it. Uh, you know, it, I, I don't know, for me, like I say, I'm not, you know, my main, the, the main thing I hear when those guys do the 40-40 is they want to go fast. It's removing a lot of wood quickly. I don't, like I say, I don't really care. <laughs> it's just one of those things that uh, I, I've never gotten into it. I don't, don't know why, but... So that's feeling pretty good. I'm gonna take a look to see how much of that now gone. So, okay, now I gotta look at design. So that's gonna come off. Um, you know, what do you want on your sides? They're both, one side's definitely a little higher. Um, and if I roll that much more, it's going to drop here. So I'm going to work my top edges. And at any time you want me to stop, what time is the 20 minutes? 11. Okay. I can stop this. I, I don't have to finish the demo. So.
what I'm hoping for is to actually bring this in so I catch the two limbs, but they're pretty far in. So I probably won't go for that. I'll see what it looks like in the bottom of the bowl. I'm just going to make my tenon now and say, okay, this is good. I'll do a cleanup cut, get rid of these ridges, and then make a tenon. Um. <laughs> Remember, I'm doing side green here. I think I can go smaller with that foot. And yes, I'm turning in the wrong direction here. Oh, there's no center on that. So that is, for me, much easier to put your chuck on to your piece if you're not in 
on the lathe. Um, especially if you get into a bigger piece. <laughs> You know what I was telling you? I wanted to demonstrate how that. <laughs> Ooh, I'm right at the edge of that tenon being too small. Can't get any luckier than that. That gap in between the jaws is. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. So. Well, I'm off. So you can see the knots here. That's what I was hoping with this piece that I'd be able to leave in there. Hopefully it'll show up in the bottom of the bowl. So now a little bit of this is, it's gone in the center. So coming in, Still got to come in and just make light cuts. Just kind of find where the wood is. I'm a little surprised it's not showing up any sap wood yet. So it's gonna be an intermittent surface a long ways down. And I'm starting to feel a lot of moisture coming out of this one. So this is where speed, if you can get it, you can hear that I turn the speed up some. It brings that surface around more often. But what's tough with this one is now I'm into those branches. So you're also kind of not only doing a side grain piece, I'm also cutting end grain at the same time, both branches. So a little bit of a weird surface to cut. And I definitely can feel it as it's going around. Again, for me, what I'm doing is leaving some mass in the center again.
Okay, now I've just got to determine what is my thickness. And this is my favorite part of turning a natural edge bowl. Where you can come in and look down both sides as you're turning. Yeah, I remember when you're doing natural edge, not to bring your handle back too far, that you hit your tips of the, you got to start sliding sideways, you know, where your tendency is to bring this back. And uh, let's see, you'll take, you can take out the, uh, so. No, I'm trying to slide across. And I, I, if everybody hasn't used a bottom feeder, which I didn't bring one along, um, they really are nice in that it's a 60 degree angle and a very short bevel. And then you do a relief grind and the relief grind on the backside of that doesn't matter. They aren't swept back, the bottom feeders. They're more of a traditional grind. So it almost looks like a spindle roughing gouge on the end with it, you know, but they really are nice when you get to this point where you're going from your side wall down to your bottom and you start coming across, they really do cut nicely and clean up those bottoms. And, and that is, a lot of it's got to do with this long bevel on here that, it tends to make you bring the handle back much further. So, um, <laughs> surprised that hasn't moved on me. So, one thing I try to get people to do also be ambidextrous and uh, be able to switch hands. This is one of those things that I see in the center. A lot of times go right in on my center point and take that nub out. Just because I'm getting close, I want to feel. A little ridge. And here, if I can clean up, and I'm trying not to really go with light pressure.
Now this one, sliding headstock here also. One of those things where it would be nice if I would have slid down here, it would have been much easier standing. Now I'm kind of coming across my body. Or if I would have slid the headstock down, I could be standing right in front of this bull. That's my mistake for not doing it. And just You gotta lift the handle to get to that very center nub and cut her off. Now in here, <clears throat> this is one of those things that um, where I can spend a lot of time. <laughs> it, it's just one of those that I feel that little edge right there and I can't leave it in there. Got rid of that one. Now I got one in there. Been through this, have you? Good enough. So the only other thing, once it was dry, I'd be turning it around and, and taking the tenon off. But that is, you can see that your thickness isn't such a huge difference when you do uh, a thin tenon 